Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today, since I have a little time for once, we're going to go ahead and start making a dent in the uh, backlog of figures that I've been meaning to get to. And uh, we'll start off by taking a look at uh, game price figures for three properties for Orimo, Lucky Star, and for Squid Girl. So I've kind of got everything off to my left here. And uh, we'll get through these little by little. And uh, it's going to take a couple videos to get through, I'm guessing, uh, since I have a 15 minute limit on my account. But uh, let's go ahead and get things started here. And since I just have the one for the Squid Girl property, we'll go ahead and start with that first. But uh, this is one similar to another uh, Taito produced Squid Girl figure that uh, I had unboxed in a previous video a while back. And this only with a second pose. But again, another in the line of the Taito game prize figures. And we'll just kind of let you see the box here on the outside. And uh, kind of go around here. And there is no... Uh, some of these have uh, licensed stickers on them. It looks like the Taito ones in this case, they did not go ahead and have one on here. I know it can be tricky sometimes with prize figures to... Uh, discern whether one is the real thing or if it's a uh, bootleg. Now, um, <laughs> I don't know why a lot of people would want to try to bootleg a game price figure because these aren't the most expensive things to begin with. So I would think if you're going to spend the time and try to sell a knockoff figure, you're going to try to do something that's uh, a lot more pricey because you'd think that'd have a better chance to go at a lower price than, say, a, a game price figure, which normally, if you're buying on the market, doesn't catch a very high price anyway, unless it's, like, super ultra rare or a really good one. Uh, I know there is one out there of uh, Major Kusanagi from uh, Ghost in the Shell, which on AmiAmi Ami is currently fetching right about 20,000 yen, you know, over 150 bucks. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't care how rare it is. I refuse to pay over $25 for a game price figure. Uh, that's just me. But again, it comes down to the fact that the quality on these, they're okay. But if you're going to spend that kind of money, uh, I'm sorry, get a good, high quality larger, better painted figure. Anyway, we'll go ahead and get Squid Girl out of the box back here in a second. So here we go. The one on the left would be, of course, the figure from the box we just opened here. And for comparison, I have on the right the uh, other game prize figure of Squid Girl, uh, Taito based, that I purchased before. Uh, now, initial impressions, you know, um, in this case, decently done prize figure. Uh, the only thing I noticed as far as the paint was uh, on the right boot here, uh, the white was kind of sloppily done. If you notice, they didn't make it all the way up to the uh, anklet. The left, a little bit of the same thing, but it's not such a rough paint job around the top. Now, uh, of course, you know, if if I want to be really stingy, I could buy, obviously, some paint and uh, take care of that. But uh, for a game price figure, nah, it's really not worth it. Overall, though, very well done. I like the multi-color to... The hair tentacles, that was definitely well done and matches up with the first. The only thing that kind of confuses me is uh, the bases on these. Now, I guess if they're saying in the one on the right that she is wading in a little bit of water, okay, fine. They use the transparent uh, blue base, whereas the one on the left... They have more of the Squid Girl tentacle hair 
uh, rounded symbol. So I guess in that case, I can uh, live with it. But I, you know, for my own preferences, I kind of would have liked to have seen the same color bases used. But I guess if she's waiting on water in this one and not in this one, it wouldn't make sense for her to be standing on a transparent blue base. Doesn't mean you couldn't use another color, but uh, I'm just nitpicking in that case. Uh, so anyway, though, for the price, definitely a cool pickup. And uh, yeah, this is another one that uh, if I were to see this in a UFO catcher in an arcade, I definitely would plunk quite a bit of money in to try to get this one out. And of course, there's a point where you just say, F it. But in my case, uh, you know, I can just buy it from the store now. So anyway, that's it for Squid Girl. We'll uh, move on to Orimo as the next property here. So back in a second. So here we are with the Orimo figures now. ISA on the right and a uh, Kirino figure on the left. These are both licensed by Sega. Uh, quite a bit of difference though in the sizes of the box. Now the one on the right side looks to be about the regular size for most all of the game prize figures that I've picked up over time, but the one on the left is surprisingly big. So uh, that had to be in a UFO catcher that had a pretty good sized claw in it to uh, be able to pick that one up. So uh, We'll go ahead and look at the ISA box here first. And, uh, you know, these are ones where, unfortunately, there is not a window to see what the figure looks like inside. So you kind of hope that uh, it's decently painted and matches the stock photo that they used on the front. And... Uh, Nothing too much special on the side here, just kind of a close-up of the stock photo. And we have our information on the back here, a uh, Sega Prize figure, of course, and a sticker here from ASCII Media Works, the uh, seal of authenticity that uh, you don't always get on some of these game prize figures, but uh, nice to know they take the time to put the sticker on there on some of these, so... Uh, you have a better idea that you're getting something that's legitimate but again it comes down to that whole it's a game price figure why would you bootleg it in the first place it's not that much as far as value so yeah i don't know anyway um <laughs> we'll go over here to the Kirino one next, of course. And once again, as I mentioned, no window, so you can't really see what the figure looks like inside. You just have your stock photo that they used on here. We have our information on the back. And again, we this time we have a nice holographic sticker. Uh, unfortunately, it won't pick up too well, but uh, maybe you can make out that it is a Katakawa licensed and produced by Sega. Now this is a little different here because most of the Sega ones are pretty much all made in China. So it's a little different to see one here made in Vietnam. And we got another close-up of the stock photo on this side. Top of the box, just a logo, of course, of the property. Now the interesting one with the ISA one, I forgot to show this, was that on the top here, they don't show her. They actually have an illustration of Kirino again. So, but of course, Kirino being the main character, even though, you know, I kind of have a thing for Kuroneko, but uh, to each their own. Anyway, let's go ahead and get these out and uh, see what they look like. Well, I will say this they definitely needed pretty much every inch of that box that uh, Kirino was in, because that figure is huge. If I were to guess, I would say that is almost a 1 to 7 scale size, because I'm kind of eyeballing a 1 to 6 scale uh, Sena figure that I picked up a long while back, and uh, just a little bit smaller in size there, so 1 to 7, maybe 1 to 8, but uh, definitely uh, the one on the right of Ayase uh, pales in comparison size-wise. Uh, she is definitely looking at uh, some of the others on my shelf here. 
that's pretty much a one to eight scale. So I'm gonna guess one to seven to her left, but uh, possible it could come in at a one to six, but since these are game price figures, obviously they don't state that anywhere. But uh, the only thing that with the uh, Carino one, I guess I'm not totally keen on is the color they used for her hair. Now I do like that they used a multi-tone to the hair, but the only thing is it comes off as just a little bit darker to me than I, I think normally it is. Uh, you know, the other thing is the, uh, yeah, you know, there's a bit of a seam showing here between the front and the back piece of the hair. Again, minor complaint because you get that on pretty much all of these. And again, it's a game price figure. So when you're paying less than 20 bucks for something like this, you know, you get what you pay for. But uh, honestly, overall, still, I think uh, I'm happy with it and uh, decently done. And again, for the price, you know, uh, this is one that uh, you'd want to plunk down some money for to pick up out of the arcade. The only thing is, I, I think this is, you know, a figure like this, you, you would kind of like to see the uh, clear-cut box so you could kind of at least look inside and get an idea that, uh, well, some of the colors don't quite match up with that stock photo. But uh, again, I am nitpicking an awful lot on a game price figure, and I really shouldn't be. And uh, before I spend too much time on that, we'll, of course, go over here and look at ISA 2. But uh, this one, very well done again for a Sega prize figure. You know, you have the kind of obvious seam at the uh, hair again, but uh, again, that's, eh, you know, looking at it a little bit too closely. Um, she's got butt cheeks. Uh, they didn't skimp on the cellulite there. So, uh, <laughs> and then I, I was looking at the, is it a phone or is it a MP3 player? I'm guessing it's, it looks like a flip phone. Uh, from the side here, but uh, decently done, not the best quality, paints a little weird, but uh, again, game price figure, you kind of come to expect that. So overall though, for the price, I think both of these, um, very good buy for the value and uh, happy to pick them up and I'll go ahead and add them in my collection along with some of the other Sega Price figures I've picked up over the time for Orimo. All right, that leaves us with Lucky Star to go here.